Welcome to Rad Chat. I'm your host, Brandy Lynn, and today my special guest is Ryan James. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So you're a drummer, a photographer. Let's kind of talk about how you first got into drumming. How did you do it when you were a kid? How did you really find your passion for it? Okay. Um, yeah. So when I was growing up, my dad's a drummer. Okay. Um, a jazz drummer, which is typically like the best kind of drummers out there. Oh, okay. Um, and I just always looked up to him growing up. And I remember specifically when I was seven years old, one day I went up to him and I was like, Dad, I want you to teach me how to play the drums. Oh, nice. And he's like, you really want to? And I was like, yes. He's probably so honored. <laughs> he was, he was. So he took me to this place called the Drum Pad, which is like a okay. local uh, little drum store in our community. Okay, he where brought, is that from? Uh, Palatine, Illinois. Oh. Uh, nice. suburb of Chicago Nice. and um, he took me there he bought me a little practice pad Aww. my first pair of sticks Do you remember that moment like like it was yesterday yeah. yes nice. and and then my first uh, little practice book which I still have okay. and from then on he would just show me things to do in there okay. and then he would he put me in the living room of our house and be like, all right, work on exercise one through five right now. So and he then, really quizzed you, like, oh, you're, you're doing this. Oh, yeah, you're doing I mean, this. This, he was the real deal, yeah. you know. So he, he, and then he'd go into the kitchen, and this was back in, you know, 96, 97. Oh, okay. And he would put a timer on the microwave. Oh. So he's like, I want you to repeat this for 30 minutes. And he'd put the timer on the microwave, oh. and I would sit in the living room by myself and just learn and learn and learn. And then every week we would have drum lessons and he would give me different music to play along to. Um, the first song that he ever made me drum to is called Get Over It by the Eagles. Oh, Eagles are good. One of his favorite bands. Oh, and okay. he gave it to me back then. And I was seven, seven years old at the time. And he's like, I'm going to put this on, just drum to it because it's basic and this is like drummer talk but like four four time okay. basic rock beat okay and so i would play to that and then from there we start he showed me um the doobie brothers oh. and we would just have weekly drum lessons and um honestly like i i used to like it, it was always tough kind yeah. of kind of like having your dad as your teacher sure. because and more stress of like yeah yes and and ex exactly and 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 he's in living with him there'll be times where he was like do you want to have a drum lesson tonight and i'm like uh, you're also trying like, to be a kid yeah exactly yeah. exactly and 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 um but but he was he's the one who really got me into it and, and and i really looked up to him i wanted to be just like him and um from there on i kind of just he would he would continue to teach me but then i would learn and just by uh like jamming along to you know blink 182 okay. All yeah. the old school pop, pop punk, punk bands, band. Travis Barker. Shout out. Um, is that one of your idols? He's mm, He is my number one number idol. One idol. So yes. Definitely shout yes. out to Travis yes. Barker. Shout out to Travis. <laughs> um, you're a very nice man. I have met him once. Oh, shit. Sure. Um, That's very, awesome. Very nice guy. Did but, you tell him that you do drums? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. I was like, dude, I grew up learning to you. And he was nice? Yeah. And oh, he was like, that's awesome. oh, that's so awesome. Oh. Um, that's so rad. Yes. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, I kind of, he, he, he taught me and he continued to teach me through my, my years of growing up, but I also took it upon myself just by jamming along to music okay. and trying to, uh, play exactly what Travis would play gotcha. or, you know, the drummer from Newfound Glory mm -hmm. or all these pop punk bands that I used to Look listen to, you know, and I would go down every day after school. I'd go down to the basement and just blast the music and play along. play along. And just the more you do that, the better you You're get. You're gonna get. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Because I heard that I don't know if I don't know drumming at all, but I heard that Travis doesn't play to the the ticker or something, right? Or Metronome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is no. that a thing? Is that like a big thing or not a big thing? That is. Um, 
uh, such a Travis thing <laughs> because I did read his memoir. And it has and, that in there. And something. yeah, and and he he's just, he's on another level. A level. You yeah. know, um, but. Um, yeah, my dad always taught me play to the metronome okay. and that's just a basic drum thing cause, because like you, the drummer is the backbone yeah. of any, any group, any like band you're up, in. You hear it, right? Exactly. There's an old saying that they, that, that I've been taught and it's called, um, they say a band is only as good as their drummer. Oh, okay. And I've, and I've had a lot of time to think about that and I'm like, that kind of makes sense because the drummer is the backbone. And you're holding everyone else together. Yeah. So if a band has like, just like kind of like a like a, a crappy drummer, mm -hmm. You'll it's know. it's gonna reflect everyone. The guitarist is not gonna be able to keep in time as well. Yeah. So the drummer is really the backbone. And it's really of important it. for the bassist too, right? Yes. I used to play bass a little bit. So yes. I kind of know yes. A bit Drums and bass need to be locked and in. So sync. so every time I'm playing with a band or I've ever played with a band. I'm always just listening to the bassist okay. and the bassist is listening to, to me because us two are the two that need to be locked, locked in, in because that's the it's very it's it's very much so the life force of the song yeah. you know the bass in most music whether it's even EDM the bass is what makes gives you that feel it you know mm -hmm. that makes you move and then yeah. you have the kick drum that goes along with the bass and so you two need to be locked in like solid. so solidly yeah. yes so how did that really shape you as you were growing up with your dad and teaching you? And then when you started to get a little older, did you still have the drive to do it? Or did like your teenage years, maybe you fell off a little bit or did you stay with it pretty solidly? It's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I almost like, I stayed with it. Mm -hmm. But I also, you know, being a teenager, you kind of want to branch out and like Live rebel like, yeah. and like do what I do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And like he would hear me jamming along to Blink-182 and he be like, a fan? well, he's, he respects he, he respects it, but he's a jazz drummer so and cool. jazz music is some of the hardest music to play. So my dad was in marching band. Oh, OK. Can Did you do marching band? No. OK. No. He always tried to make me do marching do band. I really did want to do marching band at one point. I really do love uh, marching band just as a whole. Oh, I respect concept. the hell out of it. Can I, can I swear? Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. I respect the shit out of like marching. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can swear. Like, yeah, yeah, I respect good. the shit out of marching band. I love it. Like, yeah. uh, um, he always wanted me to be, to follow in his footsteps That's because that. he was in marching band. Mm. Um, and so as I got older and in my teenage years, I started having bands and band practices were always at my house okay. in the basement. You had a whole setup? We had the whole setup. Oh, cool. Guitar amps, drum sets. Oh, nice. Did you soundproof uh, it? PA systems, yes. We had the foam on the walls. Nice, and my nice. dad, he was, they were, my parents, I was very fortunate that my, my, my family was a musical family, family, you know, so he... Well, he had no choice but to like support, support it. it you yeah. Know what I mean? But every now and then, like during, like he, there was a, a few times during band practices where like we'd be playing, and I know he's upstairs listening, and he'd come down mid band practice mm. and be like, "Hey, like, can I show you how you should be playing it right oh. now?" In and front he, of all your friends. Yeah. Ooh, and he'd sit down and play that? it. <laughs> Ooh, that horrible feeling, really. i hope he doesn't watch this but like <laughs> it was very like it was it was, it was I, I would get mad at him because obviously i was younger but like um he would come and show me how i should be playing it and my friends would be like oh my god like Ooh. and like my 12 year old self is like oh well, like yeah i know that's how i should be playing it but, but it's like, how i'm trying to play i'm trying <laughs> you don't have to come down here and show me up we all know you can play drums, drums yeah do you think, though, maybe it was him just trying to connect with you and your friends at that age as well? I I never really looked at it. Yeah. 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 Maybe, or at least. I'm yeah. assuming. Yes, yes. Because he would also, you know, he would also try to give advice to the guitarist. Oh, and, you know, okay. like basic blues. So he didn't just come down blues on chords. you. No, he wasn't coming down just to be like a dick or yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. you know. But he does love to show off. Yeah. Rightfully so. He He's, got to a level in his life where he oh, of course, is really about it. Of course. I will never be... In, 
I will never be as good as him. <laughs> shout <laughs> like, out to your dad. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my dad. Like, I love you, dad. I will never Aww. be as good as you. But you, but everyone is their own in their own right. They're good. Yes. In this perspective. Yes, I I like to think of it yeah. that way. You everyone, know? no one, you're like no one's ever. There's not going to be another another Travis Barker, another your dad. But you're going to be your own drummer star. Yes, yes, and that's actually something that I've uh, I've struggled with um, just after. 20, 21, 22 years of playing drums. Oh, wow, so you've been doing it. Well, yeah, you started when you were younger. Yeah, just throughout the whole process, um, something that I struggled with was just, like, I always wanted to be the best. Gotcha. Well, because you know? you're looking up to your dad. Exactly, and just looking up to all the greats, greats too. And I'm like, too. well, like, I want to be the best. I want to be, and even for myself, I want to be the best that I can, I can be. be yeah. And then over time, I had to learn that, like, look, you don't have to be the best. best you don't have you to know. be them no but like um i've been told that like look like when you play drums it this is you this is you playing mm -hmm. drums this is your style nobody else can emulate this your style. Yeah. you know what i mean this yeah. is something that is unique to you you might not be able to do like all the crazy like stick flips or what you know like mm -hmm. what all the pro pros can do yeah but when, but when people people have to, like when when we watch you play, you have such your own little style, style to, to it. it. Like that's what we like to watch. Yeah, that's awesome too. You know? That you created your own style. I yeah, I guess I kind of happened naturally mm -hmm. just through emulating people like Travis Barker, who I've looked up to, yeah. and 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 the thing about drumming is like you kind of take bits and pieces from different musicians and drummers okay. and and make them your own. Okay. So when I play, you know, I will I will see things that Travis Barker does, and I'll try to just like make it your own, incorporate it, yeah, yeah and and then make it my own, and and do things like that he kind of does, yeah. you know what I mean? I think that's very natural, though. I think in life we all kind of take little bits and pieces of people that we've looked up to, yeah. and make our own style. And definitely. if you can make your own style, that's probably the most empowering. I'm assuming. So. Yes, I mean definitely in 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 really any artistic field, field yeah. um it's not so much you know you you almost you look up to certain artists and you you kind of borrow from them yeah and then you kind of turn it into your own into you. yeah and that's what i think is so great about art music mm -hmm. um whether it's painting makeup yeah. anything Any act, type of fire, acting singing anything yeah you, you you can take your influences and borrow from them and then kind of turn it into your own mm -hmm. and then that becomes your style a mixture of like these 10 different yeah because everyone especially in music you always hear bands saying like i looked up to these bands i looked up to yes, those bands yes so it's and very known in music yes and everyone has inspiration definitely and, and especially in music you hear a lot of music that sounds similar mm -hmm. yeah like you have genres that are all kind of similar like pop yeah, punk you know yeah. has and you know and, and we've all heard the songs that are like the same four chords yeah. that we've all heard before <laughs> Yeah, the song on the water is like the easiest yes, to learn. Yes, yes. But like, if you can take art and then just like make it something new out of it, yeah. I think that's what's beautiful about art. Yeah, is of course. That you I can agree. you can take what's already been done and create something totally, totally brand, brand new, new from it. Which is a lot of times what you now hear because you have young yes. young people trying to just break into the industry and make their own statement, and mm -hmm. maybe there's someone that's just a drummer, or they're just coming out with their band, or just a singer, etc. And that's what's so empowering nowadays, because I feel like with Instagram now, we get a lot more of the, the Ryan James drummers, and just trying to get into clubs or, or venues, mm -hmm. that's so so empowering, I feel like, nowadays. Yeah, especially nowadays, it's, it's, it's music is has become such a... a forefront mm -hmm. because of all the technology and that we have. everybody can have a laptop now and and make their own music now which yeah. is a great thing not so much all the time for drummers because like mm. a lot of people can just like program the drums on a laptop Got you. but there's nothing like a live drummer if that's what they're looking for yes that's what I, I've tried to like stay true stay to. True I'm to like, well, yeah, yeah you can you can program it on a computer, but like live, it's still not the it's a different, same. Um, it's a different experience. Yes, and that's what I love, especially even nowadays with all the changes in music. It's like 
I've noticed that people are still appreciating like the live mm -hmm. aspect of music, yeah. even with DJs. When yeah, even DJs have bands now too. Yeah, right? drummers, everything. You know, like it's 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 like a blending of just everything. You know That's what I mean? Coming together, and, and, which is like a full circle that. kind of thing. Which yeah. is awesome that music is now coming to that term. So yeah, I feel like back in the day it was like you only like rock you have to be in the rock form. exactly you only like pop, exactly and now we're having a and lot and now you of have crossover. like metal with rap you have edm yeah, like with Post like hip-hop yeah Osborne, yeah which, which really is really crazy which is awesome, awesome. Yeah. exactly and i love that you it's know really so cool. it's like it, it, it gives me hope and i'm sure it gives a lot of other musicians hope yeah of to, course. the fact that there's still an outlet for that yeah you know like the chain smokers one of the biggest electronic groups, groups out there yeah. a couple years ago they went on tour with a live drummer oh did they yeah and that's cool they didn't need him yeah because of the chain smokers and and they you know the kids in, the kids in the crowd they don't care like they just want to hear the music played and you know yeah. but like the chain smokers just said we're bringing a live drummer on to drum along to that's our awesome. tracks and it adds such just like such an extra value, value to your to set yeah and, and i'm sure that the audience doesn't even know how much of an impact that was exactly. but when they're there they're like this shit's fucking awesome exactly <laughs> do you feel like you want to so you have you said you've been in bands yes and you had some bands are you currently in a band are you doing more of your own solo kind of stuff a little bit of both okay so i um when i first Currently, I am drumming for my one of my best friends from Chicago, okay. Gianni Taylor. Okay, there you go. Shout out, Gianni. Shout out, Gianni Taylor. <laughs> check out his music. It's just popping off. It's Where great. can they check it out? His Instagram, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever. Gianni Taylor music, <laughs> Spotify, Gianni Taylor. He's, he's, he's great. He's great. You hear that, guys? Go yes, check it out. Yes. So, so when, when, he's, when he has a live show he wants me to be his live drummer oh, so every time That's he awesome. plays live i'm his live drummer oh cool and how is that collaboration at first it was it was it was interesting because yeah. he doesn't make music for live drums oh, okay so, so you have to find that balance yeah and, and and when i first started with gianni i was his i was his photographer and, oh, okay. vi and video guy oh nice and but he knew i played drums and so for so many years i was trying to just hint like yo like maybe we should do this <laughs> yeah exactly like and like yo just, just, just like we so should get into this <laughs> exactly so at about like two and a half maybe three years ago um i started doing little drum covers on my instagram okay and i did one to his songs and he had a show coming up in hollywood and he was like yo do you want to do you want to drum live for me oh shit just by like, doing that video yeah and i was wow. like dude Yes, I was like, like I've, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting five years <laughs> yes. for you to ask me this. That's funny. Yes, I've been That's telling really you cool. this, and we did it, and we had never had such a positive response from really? the crowd wow. because, like we were just saying, like so the live drum. Energy. Yes, the crowd feeds off the energy, and Kevin, also one of my best friends, Kevin Weir, shout, shout out, out to, to Kevin. Him. <laughs> um, he is that he's also the DJ for Gianni. Oh, okay. So, and us three, we're all from Chicago. Oh, so we all... Oh, nice little community yes. of dudes just making it real. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're all out here and we know where we come from. So when it's us three on stage, we just feed off each other. Oh, that's awesome. And that's what's great about it is that, like, the crowd recognizes that too. At least I like yeah. to think so. Yeah, know, I'm sure you feel the energy coming definitely, from the crowd. Definitely, But it was a bit of an adjustment at first because um, they were so used to just... DJ and Gianni, mm. like, you know, pressing play, yeah. and then you do the song. But when you add live instruments into a set, you have to, you have to adjust your music a little bit. Okay. You have to create more of a set. You have to practice more. Yeah. For ex sure. for example, like if if he has a song that's just strictly like 808s and a simple snare. You throw a, a, a drummer in there with a full set, some of the things that like the producer programs, mm -hmm. you're not able to do mm, physically. You. So, so that's kind of so, awkward. Yeah, so it, it was an adjustment at first. So I had to learn how to not mimic what was going on in the music, mm -hmm. but 
but create complementary drum parts. Gotcha. To kind of fill make it feel like it's all exactly, already to a make part it, of it. Yes, to make gotcha. it sound like almost like a new song, which is kind of what I try to do now. And I've told Gianni this before, or anyone I play with who wants me to drum with them, I'll tell them, look, I'm not here to drum solo. Like I'm not here to overpower. What they're doing. Yes, I understand. You are you are in the spotlight and I am in the back. Mm -hmm. Even though we're all on stage, yeah. this is your show. show. You know what I mean? I am your drummer, and I want to make sure you look the best. Oh, that's a good way to think about it. Because you think some people might just be like, oh, I'm on stage. I want to try to yeah, put in my own little piece. Exactly. Piece. Yeah, let me drum so solo sure real quick. Really you know? That. Yeah, and I, and I don't want to do that. And, and um, that's just how I've been taught, that, you know, and I've gotten advice from many people. And it's just like, just play what needs to be played. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I'm not trying to overshadow who's the actual art, like artist. Like the, the center yeah. of the artist. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But that's cool because I'm sure that a piece of you gets more appreciated in that setting because they're like, oh, this guy is just really wants me to have a great show. And then he has a great show yeah. because he's just having fun being there. Yeah. That's so cool. Exactly. Do you... so? Being a drummer, does it give you this great sense of, do you feel like you're when you're on stage you're thriving or when you're drumming alone are you thriving? How do you really, what makes you the most happiest, I guess, is where I'm trying to go with that. It varies. It varies. It varies. The whole experience, I'm sure, it is varies. obviously a happy yes, passion. Yes. But. Um, there's times where I'm doing my drum covers uh, for my Instagram which are just like little 60 second at most, okay. you know, little snippets nice. um, where I get a little teaser. Yeah. Where I get just like so much that satisfaction from that. Yeah. And then there's other times where, you know, um, if I play live, I'm a perfectionist. So mm -hmm. like, you try to make everything perfect. Yeah. So people will come up to me after I play and they're like, dude, you killed it. And I'll be sitting there like, overthinking maybe like, like wait really I? yeah like wait <laughs> like wait really like but then you have to remember that, that like something my dad taught me that like not everyone in the crowd is a drummer mm, yeah. so they don't need if, if you mess up they might not even know they don't even notice yeah you know? most of the time yeah they have no idea but being an artist like most artists are perfectionists, perfectionists. in their own right yeah of course um i tend to focus on Every little piece Yeah, do. so I'm like, really? You didn't see me, like, drop my stick or, um, you know what I mean? It's like, nah, man, it's really great. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, so I get, I get satisfaction the most out of um, whoever I'm playing for. Okay. And how they feel after, after the, set. the set. So if they're super excited, you know, yes. like, I did my job, I exactly. feel great. Oh, that's exactly. great. It's great because it shows like your intentions towards it. Like it shows right. you just have a passion for drumming that yeah. it doesn't matter. Like maybe, yeah, you're a perfectionist and you know you're always going to feel like nitty gritty of your performance. But as soon as they feel happy, you're so satisfied. That's, that's a great way to that's, be. That's how I try to keep it. Like, don't get me wrong. Like every now and then I'm like when I'm performing, I'm going to be like, all right, I'm going to kind of like flex for a minute. Yeah. Like, I'm well, going to you know, I'm gonna wanna... flex for a minute, <laughs> but I'm not going to overpower the vocalist yeah. and just start doing some like John Bottom, like drum <laughs> solo or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, um, yeah, it really, co it really comes down to like, like how I feel after I play, after you know? Play. Yeah. And, and there's been, there's been times, you know, cause I've been in a lot of bands growing up. Okay. I've been, I've played a lot of shows. I've played live. A lot yeah but I still get so nervous, nervous. you so know do you have like, like a stage fright to you not really stage fright it's just that like it's it's like the feeling of like like all eyes on you and you're and, overthinking yeah and you're the drummer and drums are so loud so mm -hmm. like even if you mess up in the moment you think like oh sh oh shit like everyone just heard that yeah but they did it they didn't yeah but I did but because it, because yeah. I'm a drummer and I know you know, every, you know yeah. so like when I'm done playing whether it's live or even like in my room you know I have moments of doubt where I'm like oh like that sounded like that sounded like shit and uh, like you know that wasn't good and that wasn't good enough for for me you know I should be better um, but I think most artists 
in any field that they're in yeah have those moments oh, of course. where those moments of doubt where they're like ah oh, like am i really good enough to be doing this like yeah. there's so many people who are probably better than me and but the the satisfaction for me comes from uh the people who are closest to me who rely on me giving you that positive reinforcement. yeah so not That's only really not only just uh my friend gianni who i've been drumming for um my friend kevin shout out again kevin, kevin. uh we started a <laughs> pop punk project called oh, all shit. ends well nice. and um that gave me some satisfaction because we got to kind of uh, connect with our roots that like what that really see? inspired us inspired in a music. time to in a time of where like that kind of music is sadly kind of dying out. out. Yeah, yeah that's true. you know. But and I do I do genuinely think that it's going to make a comeback. I and so Blink can and be it a big is comeback. Blink and is still killing it. I mean, look, good. My Chemical Romance. Dude, my like, chem- oh, I tried to get tickets to those concerts. And sold, it sold out. Sold out so minutes. Quick. Minutes. I know. It made me so depressed because I saw My Chem's last ever show. They did so back Their in farewell. the day. Well, back in the day, um, I lived in Jersey, and Bamboozle was a big thing there. And mm-hmm. Blink One Two was supposed to be the headliner. It was in Asbury Park, and Mike comes from Jersey, and they ended up showing up in place of Blink, and no one knew it, and the next thing oh. we know, they, they broke up. So we're like, oh my god, we saw the last show ever. So I was like, oh, I'm... No way. So I was pretty bummed about that. One, but. but then they had that one show... That they came back for. It was like last year, yeah. and it sold out in like so cool. five minutes. It's so sad. But you know Mike what, the greatest. But you know what they were doing with that, because... Three months later, they announced, okay, we're going on a full tour. Yeah, that was just their tester. Trying to, I think they were gauging it. If you people know, were still trying to I genuinely them. think, off topic, I No, know, yeah, it's great. Like, That's not on topic. I genuinely think that the scene is making a comeback. I have always thought the scene was still alive. <laughs> well, it's been alive, but, but it's, been, not, a, it's yeah. been on life support yeah, down here, you like, know? But, like... Yeah, it's true. Because dubstep and all that, sh- all that shit, it's like... It's phasing out a little yes, bit now. Yes, but it was so high so at one point. Popular. Now rap people are getting tired of it. Yes, yes, but I love that. Like me personally, when Blink One Eighty Two went on tour with Lil Wayne, that was pretty. So crazy. many yeah. people like were hating on it, and I'm like, but Travis has already been doing stuff. That's with what I'm those saying. Artists. That's another reason why I love surprised. Travis, and I don't want to make this whole thing. Up. No, like, it's good. Everyone, has Travis. Their I'm the president of the Travis Barker fan club. <laughs> I can talk about Gwen Stefani all day, so don't uh, worry. <laughs> so like, that's the one thing I love about him is that he is respected throughout genres genres yeah do you feel like that's kind of what you want to yes, do 100 percent. nice 100 percent. so a lot of the drum covers that i post on my page are different um genres. are different genres and and i got that actually from watching travis because nice. he drums to a lot of hip-hop yeah and hip-hop is very fun to drum to because the the songs themselves are very simple beats yeah but it gives you so much room to be creative yeah. and create your own grooves and that's something oh, that nice. i've picked up from travis okay. barker and, and i love that that's awesome do you think it's more challenging to do these other genres because you're not as maybe comfortable with them so it's like not only is it more fun to do a different genre but it's also like a little bit of a challenge yes nice. yes it's definitely a little bit of a challenge it's definitely uh very fun yeah um it's challenging because for example, like if I'm drumming to a hip hop song where the drums are done on a computer, mm-hmm. you can do so much with a computer nowadays yeah. that a human can't physically do with two hands. two hands. So you have to do your best to either try to mimic it, which I try to stay away from, okay. or use the beat that's given to you and find your own little groove to fill in these little like gaps gaps. which i've noticed that a lot of drummers try to do okay it's not so much about like a typical drum cover i'm going to play exactly what the song is is playing i'm going to create my own beat to this rap song and make a new song out of it Nice. which is that gives me satisfaction when i do my drum covers is i try to keep in mind that like when I post, I'm not trying to, sh- I'm not trying to show off ever. Okay. Like I, I, I've never really been that person. Yeah. And whether it's because of like skill level or just like how, where you come from. Yeah, I think it's um, a lot to do with how you come from. It's, um, it's more of just like I want to be 
I want to I want to create something new. Yeah. Out of out of something that's already been made, made. you know. Because you feel and like you're probably not just doing the same thing over and over again. Exactly. Which then goes back to what you're saying about making your own style. Yes. So that's like a exactly. full circle kind of thing for you. Yes. And I'm sure that's more fulfilling being a drummer where you're not just stagnant. You're just always making it fresh and Definitely. new, which is probably more fulfilling. Definitely. So like when it, sometimes when I'm playing like a hip hop song, um, I'll incorporate little things that I've learned from metal music. Oh, okay. With like double bass drum. Yeah. You know, because a lot of a lot of hip hop songs are just like half time, very like. If we're talking music, you, you're familiar with metal music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the break. Definitely you have <laughs> you have the breakdowns where it's like the heavy Pretty like heavy. like the heavy halftime stuff. And all. But that's rap music. It's like yeah. one, two, three, four. One, two, three, yeah. four. But the rap song is so basic. When you come in with live drums, you can add like double bass in there that you've gotten from metal music yeah. in the past you i can take these different genres these little things and kind of kind of work them into, into what something you're trying to something do. brand new do you feel like when you bring that to like gianni or or someone else you're working with they're like oh shit like this is crazy like do you ever get really cool reactions like that yeah or maybe even to your yes. girlfriend when she's yes. listening to you play like yes how is that experience for you when other people give you like really good reactions especially because you're so in your head sometimes um or do you maybe not like it as much? Because I'm so in my head sometimes, I've had people come to me and be like, hey, like, this is, this is Ryan. He's the best drummer I know. And, 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 and me, and me, I go like, well, how many drummers do you know? Oh, you know, so like, like I kind of, I, oh, I sabotage myself. Like I know, I know. But like, it's just. That's me calling. Like, I, that's, that's easy a, for me to say. I feel like a lot of artists are like that, yeah. you know, and, um. But there's been times, yes, especially uh, with Gianni, where it's it's I've come up with something so different to where he's like, dude, I cannot wait to play this live. Oh, that's awesome. So he's very you know? accepting of that. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Cool. And he, he's always trying to get me into the studio. Oh, shit. And How has being in the studio? Uh, I don't go as much. Okay. I'm sorry, G. <laughs> We've talked. But, like... Um, I've told him why he, he, he does try to get me into the studio. Right. And because he wants input from multiple people Sources. there, you know, and I've gone to the studio, I've known him almost 10 years. Oh, so I've been in the studio with him a good so amount of time. many times. And a lot of times it's just sitting around and hanging out, you know, yeah. and you throw in ideas every now and then, but lately he's wanted me to come in and help with like the, the songwriting oh, okay. or, the, or the beat making yeah which I love that because that's more of your style right but I've also told him I've noticed this about myself recently that I told him I had to talk with him one night and I, and I, and I was just like I'm like look like I love that you're invited I want to be there in the studio with you mm -hmm. I love you know I love to give feedback I have creative ideas I have ideas yeah. whether you use them or not that's whatever yeah, I'm not going to be offended um, but I like personally, I like when he goes to the studio and he creates like a rough draft and gotcha. then he'll send it to me. And then you can play with it. Yes. And then he'll okay. be like, Hey, we just did this the other day and I can come and then I can come back and be like, dude, that sounds really good. Yeah. I have ideas now. Gotcha. So now the next time you're there. Let me come, come in. So you need that first kind of brainstorming yes. effect, which yes. is totally cool I need, cool and I need like, I, I want to. I like to see what they can come up with. They make the outline, and you'll go with the brainstorming. Yes, and then I, and then when I hear the outline, I in my head I hear like, all right, well maybe then you could have the drums do this right here. Got you. But when it comes to like from scratch, like Ryan, give us a beat to start with. It's, it's a little like, more pressure. It's like I'm sure, and definitely, not as natural. definitely, yes, and not as natural. And I'm like, I want you to come up with what you want to come up with. Yeah. Send it to me, and then I will, as your friend foremost, like I will tell you whether I like it or not. Yeah, that's true. And and if you can bring your love for it. Exactly, either. and and if. I have to like 
with with any musician or band that I play with, I have to like the music that yeah. I'm playing. That's most important because have I you have, ever had an experience I, where you maybe didn't like the music and you weren't as passionate playing it? Yes. So that's probably why you're yes. like that now. I'm yes. Sure. I've been in I've been in a lot of bands and I've been in all types of bands like ska bands. Oh shit. Uh, hardcore punk. Nice. And probably like the hardcore punk was the ones where I was like. Uh, like not I don't more really your like, not so much your vibe because it's just like it's a different it's type so, of music it is and it's pretty it's pretty like straightforward, straightforward. all the way through it's and like it's the like, Misfits every song is so fast and short yeah it's like it's, but it's just like, all pretty you know what I mean yeah. it's like so um I have to like I really have to like the music which is I'm um, which is probably why people like to work with you because they know okay he's he's fucking with my shit exactly so it's really empowering yes nice so where do you feel like you are now in your drumming? Are you st- so you're doing your covers and you're yes. working with some artists. Do yes. you have any like future goals or maybe like wanting to perform more? Do you have any performances coming up that you want to talk about? Well, as of right now. Oh, with coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we have coronavirus. We have the quarantine. On. All so. gigs are canceled. But did you have gigs? You, yes, that yes, sucks. yes, yes. So, so did it so, affect so you guys? Pretty yeah. So um, I was fortunate enough to meet um, my girlfriend's best friend's boyfriend. Oh, okay. Who is John Berklin, and oh, he's the shit. drummer for this metal band, Bad Wolves. Dang, guys, if you don't Shout know out to Bad John. Wolves, John, I love you. I love you so much, John. <laughs> They're um, really rad. I actually fuck with that. I'm band. glad. I'm glad you're a fan and They're you would cool. appreciate that. Um, when they but did the cover for Zombie, yeah, that was when I first heard them. Mm-hmm. And then I heard that they were supposed to meet with her like right before she died, and I'm like, oh my god, uh, yeah, my heart. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope you guys can like chat about it at Dude, some that would point be dope. because like he, he's such, he's one of the nicest people, people ever, you, you know. And and uh, as a fellow drummer, I I had my dad, but like. Now you have someone more in the industry. I have somebody who I feel is like a big brother oh, who nice. I can like kind of like a mentor. Exactly. And like look up to who who has challenged he, he has challenged me whether he realizes it or not. That's awesome. He has challenged me to be better and um he has said some very very inspiring and motivational things to me. Dude, that's awesome. And um I was very fortunate to be introduced to him. And for him to take me in as as kindly as he did. Under his little wing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, he went on tour in Europe oh, with the band. And yeah, they're touring all over. And for huh? two months, he let me use his little practice lockout space. Oh, shit. That's dope. Which, which, since moving out here from Chicago for five years, I always just prayed that I had a space where I could go play my real drums. Yeah. Instead of, like, electric drums in... Get in more in an experience. apartment, it's not the yeah. same, you know. It's hard. So I was very fortunate that he let me do that. Dude, that's really and awesome. Yeah, and do you feel like that has really helped you now, like having someone that you know became commercially successful in a sense? They're on the you know the radio and yeah, mentor, and he's made it in the industry to help you now feel like, oh shit, if he can do it, I can definitely do it. One hundred percent. That's awesome. One hundred percent, and it's not so much that like, oh shit, if he could do it, I could yeah. do it because he is phenomenal. Well, not in that sense, but like. You but know someone that yes, made their and, dream come true. And he has said things to me that, like, I, I won't repeat, like, no, no, specifically yeah, what personal. he has said to me, but he's, he's said things to me that have, that people have never said to me. Oh, so that's and so, so, so it, hit, it hits me in a way to, to where I feel like, okay, ma- maybe, drummer. yeah, exactly. Maybe, yeah. maybe I can. And he also taught me that um, I used to, when I was a little younger and a little more immature, I used to see other drummers as like, oh, he's my competition. Mm, got you. He's better than me. So then I would get discouraged. Okay. You know, or I would see it in like a negative way. Yeah. You know, like, oh, he's my competition. I need to be better than him. I don't even want to be friends with that guy because he's so he's good. So, yeah. I need to I'm be, I need to be better him. than him. He's going to get the job that I want. Yeah. I'm sure that's really hard with any craft too. Like, yeah. I sometimes feel like, like l- lately, like, I saw a bottle who maybe didn't have as many followers on Instagram when I start, like when she started, but now she has more than me, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm a little insecure. So I it, feel it, the same way. Exactly, and it can get like that. And luckily, John is such a great guy that like he's made me feel that like, um, he said things to me just just to to give me that like the motivation and courage, that, just and that that just that, drive, that, that spark that like I hadn't 
gotten from really anybody Aww. you know like yeah. your friends will tell you things yeah, you friends. know but like when you hear it from someone who's been through it it's a little and no it's different exactly and that's, oh, that's awesome dude it's it's been it's been good so lately um obviously i'm always going to be gianni's drummer okay. when he needs me nice so that's a stable act you guys have going. yes yes nice. and and that is always that is on gianni's time yeah he's he's making music on his own flow yeah thing. he's doing his music when he needs me for a show i will be there um kevin doing the pop punk stuff whenever he needs me do you guys still have that band going on yes it's more of a solo thing now oh, okay uh he decided to take it more of in kind of like a solo gotcha. uh right. route but you'll still drum when he wants live, to live if he needs it yes nice. and then um aside from just drum covers in my room on my Instagram and my social media, which yeah. is just kind of just for myself. Just, yeah. Just, but keeping just, your craft going. Just like, stay sane, yeah. you know, because I can only go like seven days without drumming before I start to go I feel like, like. You need to drum. I go crazy, yes. And yeah, because you're so used to it. I feel like you probably, your hands feel like they need to do something. I get this pent up energy and I'm like, I need to just unleash it on. Something. On the my, kit. Exactly. Do you feel like it's exactly. a workout also? Because I know Travis is fucking going hard on that shit. 100%. It is a full body workout. I yeah. have told everybody this. And people are like, I have a gym membership. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, you guys don't understand that drumming is... It's a workout. <laughs> it's legs. <laughs> it's arms. And it's cardio. And it's, it's your mind, too. You and and to it's your focused. brain. Yes. And it's your brain. And it's just like... I always feel so happy after playing. Nice. For the most part. There's been yeah. times, obviously, when you if you feel like you didn't play well, but then you go back to it the next day. You, you still have that passion for it and love, so it'll yeah. always make you happy. Definitely. Do you feel like maybe, like, from some things you've been saying, that the, that being into drums has really helped you in life, being positive and just keep trying and just keep going on in life. Because we've all, you know, everyone's been through some shit. And oh, yeah. If you have that passion, which yours is drumming, oh, yeah. that it's really brightened your life in a sense. Definitely, 100%. It's been the one thing that uh, no matter what I've gone through. You've always had to, like, fall back on and look at. Yeah. Nice. And, and there's been times, uh, I remember you asked me earlier, if I like uh, uh, like stuck with drumming, got or, you. Yeah, yeah. There were times where I did fall out of it, and uh, through my teenage years, I got to a point where I just got really interested in guitar. Oh, okay. Still a musical instrument, though. Yeah, and Still but, in I, was like, but I was like, I want to, I want to play, I want to play guitar. You know. So my dad was like, Okay, I'll get you like the. The basic, like, beginner starter pack, yeah. Squire, <laughs> Fender Squire, like, $200, comes with that little amp, you know, it's this really <laughs> shitty <maybe> guitar, <laughs> yeah, but, like, he's like, all right, I'll get you that, you know, and I, and I loved it, you know, I learned all these right. songs, um, I would play along to, like, Avenged Sevenfold, oh, shit. and, that's some hard songs, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, you know, drop, <laughs> tuning it into Drop D, and, like, so I, I, I do know guitar to an extent, which and, actually helps with just the musical elements, definitely, Definitely having the ear for it too. Yeah, and 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 uh, I I remember telling my dad like I, it was like a two year phase where I was like I'm like oh, I just want to be a guitarist in a band. I want to mm. be a guitarist in a band. So you almost switched. I almost switched, <laughs> and my dad was the one who was always like, I mean, I su musically I support you. Yeah. But every he would always tell me like. You're a drummer. You're a drummer. You're a drummer. You have the drummer. And then, <laughs> drummer instinct in you. Yes. And then it, and I finally like realized that I was like, damn, you're right. You're right. So. And then I here you are. And yes. Yeah, so Making I it happen. Stuck with the drums. and. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. And you're also doing photography too. So do you want to talk a little bit about that as well? How did you kind of get into that? Was it just the creative flow that you were looking for? I got into photography when I was like. 13, 14 years oh, old. So you did everything pretty, pretty young. Yeah, yeah. When nice. I, I was a little nerd when I was growing up. So um, are we all nerds though? <laughs> but yes, yeah, I was. So I was like when those digital cameras were coming out. Oh, like the Kodak. Exactly. <laughs> nice. You know, um, I I took an interest in it, and at the same time, while drumming, I took an interest in you know web designing okay. and and like 
coding and nice. just like nerd photoshop like i taught myself photoshop photoshop's at, important skill these days <laughs> yeah 100 percent, and everybody knows how to use it now apparently yeah. and but i was 14 and i taught myself that's pretty impressive all of it and i don't half of the stuff i don't remember anymore but the things you like, use you'll remember right so i was always very nerdy and just like creative growing up and um Photography. Really okay, 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 yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> no, yeah, photography. Um, I was into it at a young age, just kind of naturally. Yeah. And then in high school, I was always into like graphic design. Okay. Okay. So then photography kind of went hand in hand with that in terms of like website designing, and then it kind of all followed one another. And then I took a few photo classes in high school nice. and realized um, I was like, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm okay at this, yeah. you know, like you I it. have an eye for it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I started doing it more and more and just learning more about photos and photo editing, taking more classes on it. And uh, from there, from photography, it evolved into videography. Nice. So then in high school, I was the school's videographer. Oh, okay. So I would do weekly videos of our school's football team games. Oh, nice. Because our school was, like, really known in Illinois for being... Being into football. And yeah. School, a lot of schools, high schools, yeah, especially were... Yeah, school spirit. And so yeah. I would film the games, and I, would, and I would edit these videos in ways of just, like... They were, like, hype videos yeah. to music and, like... Nice. They were almost like music videos, yeah. you know. And then um, from there, like, just the response from people is is really what, like, yeah, is really what kind of gave me, like, the the, the drive, drive to, to keep, to keep going. going. Nice. Right. I'm like, okay, well, I must, if people are liking it, yeah, then. Something's going well. <laughs> I, I must be doing something, yeah. right, at, at, like, 17 years old, yeah. you know. Um, Which is cool that even they had those programs in high school because not oh, every yeah. high school has those programs. Yeah. I don't know if mine did. No, yeah, we were very That's fortunate, cool. especially with my, with where I came from, you yeah. know. Um, and then from there, uh, the photography evolved into videography and filmmaking. Okay. And then I went to, when I graduated high school, I went to Columbia College in Chicago nice. for film production. Nice. For two That's years. Exciting. Yeah, for two years. And uh, learned a lot there. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of felt like, you know, I don't know if I need film school. Like, gotcha. like I've gotten by this far by yeah. just learning on my on own. own. Um, so I dropped out of film school halfway through. And then I ended up meeting Kevin and Gianni. Nice. And that's where the whole music Snowball thing. Came. Yeah, I started as I started as their photographer and video guy. Nice. And then up until like two years ago, you got more into the drum aspect. They finally we're yeah, like, all right, yeah, we'll so let them like, come right, in. Exactly. I'm like, guys, like, let's keep that to the side for now. So really, so. like, you know, you got the the skills for the time you were there, and then you even made it you exemplified it even more and now you're out here really getting it done yeah so, but i'm sure it's yes. nice to have those skills just so that you're more and more well-rounded of a oh, person oh definitely definitely it comes in handy a lot um i never try to like be so like full of myself no, you know yeah. but like i know i'm i'm i i know things about different areas yeah. like you can wear multiple hats you yeah, know which is really important which yes exactly and 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 somebody asked me once when i moved out here they were like would you rather be kind of good at a lot of things or would you rather be mm -hmm. really good at one, one thing? thing and and that's even to this day resonates, resonates with me and i'm like well i don't know like i'd still kind of rather be good at just like a couple different a things. A few things yeah. because you can bounce around and that's what kind of what I'm doing now is the the, the music and the drumming will always be my number one course, because it's yeah. what's o it's, it's been there my whole life. Yeah. You know, it's it's literally in my in my soul. In your DNA. The, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's in my DNA. Your the dad's rhythm <laughs> the rhythm is literally whether I like it or Long not. You. And my dad has no choice but to support because <laughs> I'm like 
you did this to me. Thank you, yeah. you did this to me. <laughs> you can't tell me not to pursue drumming because you did this to me. Yeah. You put Which this I'm sure inside he's me. Very proud about. He he's like, is, that's my son. Yes. He's playing drums. He is. He is. But at the same time, he's like, well, are you are you getting paid for it? Mm. You're getting paid. always the story. Of know? course, you have to make a living, and it's very tough for artists and musicians, especially yeah. out in LA. And, yeah, LA. and um, I was fortunate enough to, you know, aside from the groups that I play with mm -hmm. from time to time and the solo stuff I do, um, I would do uh, solo gigs. Oh, okay, nice. So I'd get booked at um, clubs oh, nice. and events. Um, who, How was that, doing like your own solo stuff? It was a lot of fun, actually. Nice. Um, and all I would do was just jam along to a DJ. Oh, shit. Go so ahead. I would bring my drums or my electric drums, nice. and I would just tell the DJ, like, hey, like, I would play for, you know, 15 minutes at a time, okay. little 15 minute sets, and then nice. the event, the party would go on, go on, and then I'd come back on and play. Oh, but sure. I'd talk to the, G, the, the DJ and I'd be like, hey, like, like, yo, cue up these like five songs, like, like, we're, what, like this party's <laughs> lame right now, let's turn it, let's turn it up a little bit. Yeah. And, oh, that's cool. and, and, and that cool. was, yeah, and that was really some of the most fun times ever, nice. is watching an event that's like kind of like eh. and then just and then when you the go on with change. the DJ and you put on some like really hype song and then there's a live drummer there Dude, and, that's and you awesome. just you look out there and you see everyone's vibe just like their energy just just that lives. that's what really like gets your your it, heart pounding yeah it really it's really fulfilling yeah. because like you have that effect on people. on people like it's not so much about like hey everyone stop what you're doing and watch me play right, yeah. it's it's about it's more the experience that you're providing exactly the energy you that you're it. yes the energy that you're putting out there for that's the people awesome. and they have a good time as a result dude that's so rad and that's how i try to look at yeah, it yeah that's know? probably what also makes you such a po i mean just knowing you for the few years i have you're very humble you're super positive well, even though you. we all you know go through our own things we're all in our own minds yeah. you still come off very positive and thank i'm sure you. it's just the fact that you get to play live music like i know when i go to concert it's the best day of my life so that oh, must yeah. be so awesome you're putting on the show yeah nice so are you still doing the solo gigs uh or like, just as they kind of come as when, they kind of come yes nice. as they come cool. um Interestingly enough, um, I've been bouncing back and forth between doing drumming and working on uh, uh, film production sets, oh, music okay. videos. Nice. How do you like doing that? Love it. It's, it's I love it. a different experience, too. Yeah, but it goes back to just, like, going to film school. Like, yeah. you know, film was something that I was also very interested in. Yeah. So that's the originally why I moved out here. Oh, was okay. I had an internship as a production assistant oh, on an indie feature film. Oh, nice. That's why I made the move out here from oh, Chicago. Wow. I was going to ask you, how did you decide to come yes, out Yes, that's, that is exact, that's oh, what nice. happened. And it, you know, it didn't really pan out, oh, you know, okay. whatever. And then f a, year, a couple years went by and then, uh, did you have like culture shock when you came here? Cause I know I did, but it's a very different environment oh, yeah. out here. Oh yeah. Honestly, like <laughs> the first two and a half years I weird. lived out here, I thought about moving home. Oh, really? Every Were you day, homesick a lot? Every day. Oh, every single day. Wow, really? Day. See, I never got homesick, yes. but it was just weird for me. Yeah. Nice. So are you glad now that you're you're out here and yes. you're doing it? Yeah. Do you still get a little homesick? Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, just because I'm sure you're close to your family still. Yeah. Yeah, nice. I do. I do miss it, but I also know, you know, like... You, you enjoy could, living out here. Yeah, and it's... I feel like it's it's where you need to be yeah, for certain for what things. You're doing. Yeah, in the industry, I guess. Yeah, and also you know you go home and you go visit home and like after about like. You remember why you went back? <laughs> exactly after like a, a yes. certain amount of time, you're just okay, like okay, leave, jump in the plane. yeah, I'm like okay, yep. I'm kind of ready to go back now. Because it's like I decided to leave, and now I remember why I decided to exactly. leave. Exactly, yep. we've all Exa been there. Yes. If you move somewhere else, you've all been there. Yes, <laughs> all it takes is that one night to go out to that hometown bar, and you see those people uh, that you went to high school do the with. Same thing. Yeah, still, and you're, you're just like, like what? Mm, yes. Oh, hey, I thought I'd never see you again. Like, awkward. Mm. Oh, this, yeah. Or 
Or like yeah. that one bad fight with your sister or your brother, and you're like, God damn it, this is why I need to go. Back <laughs> exactly. Home. It's like, exactly. Okay, bye. Except my brothers are out here now, so I can't oh, escape my that. Oh, are out here. <laughs> yeah. That's cool because yeah. I, I think no, when I first nice. met you, you they used to I was living, back home. I was living with one the one, okay. yeah, the oldest, and now my brother Sean is out here now. Oh, nice. How is and, that? Uh, Having more of like a family connection. It's out here. really nice. It's nice. really nice because he's probably the one I've been closest with oh, yeah that's great. And, and it's been nice nice I'm sure that kind of helps with the homesickness too then yeah yeah cool awesome so is there anything that you kind of want to like maybe your last kind of parting words of like and we we know you look up Travis Barker is there anyone else that you really like got inspired by musically besides Travis Barker mm. <laughs> Or just people that were inspirations musically to you? I get inspired by everybody. Yeah. Honestly, oh, cool. like even oh, that's so uh, nice. Gianni, Kevin, my friends. Yeah. You know, and and I've had talks with even uh, like Gian- my closest friends. Yeah. And and we say the same thing, and and they'll tell me that like when I see you when I see you drumming or doing this, I get so inspired. Oh, that must be so nice to hear. It is, but I'm, but I'm like, I'm like, dude, what do you mean? I'm like, when I hear you put out this song, oh. I'm like, you don't even realize. I'm like, you're the one inspiring me to do that. Oh, you know, so you so this little love fest exactly, going on. yeah, little, yeah, yeah, little <laughs> bromance, little but, bromance. But, but, but it's yes, also yes. uplifting because you guys are all in it together. Exactly, and, and it's cool. You can have a, you have your mark on the singer, you have, and the singer has a mark on the drummer. Exactly. And it's not a competition. It's like we all want yeah. each other to be the best that we can be. That's awesome. I feel like that's when you know you're in the right group or you're working with the right people. Definitely. Because especially not being from here and having that in common. When you first move out here, you don't really know who's who, yeah. who's trying to help and me. And what their motives are. Yeah. Yes. So I'm sure not only are, since everyone's from Chicago, that you have that in, in common. And then you also just are trying to just be like-minded in a one, one centered goal. Yes. 100%. 100%. <laughs> it's like, we keep, we're like, if one of us makes it. We're all making it. Exactly. That's great. Because we're not going to leave anyone else hanging out. Like, oh, you know what I mean? That's and awesome. Like, it's cool you have friends like that because that's I'm really very, rare. I'm very fortunate. Very fortunate. That's you awesome. Know? And we motivate each other and, and nice. just want the best. That's so... Oh. That's so precious, my little heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you should definitely check out Ryan James and all his groups and all his friends. Yes. When the coronavirus is over, hopefully we can see you soon playing. Yes, hopefully. Nice. If not, you can see me playing from my bedroom. There you go. Follow him on Instagram. Is there anything you want to give, like a last parting advice for maybe upcoming drummers or photographers or just anyone trying to really break into the industry? <sighs> I will question. say no 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 <laughs> that's great I will say um, just stay at it uh, keep doing it even if uh, plenty of people are gonna ask you to work for free and I know you're not gonna want to sometimes you might in the beginning and, yeah and and we all know there's bills to pay and, and but uh, you never know what might lead to something else and so many times that I have learned more recently than not that when you least expect it, something will somehow, you won't be able to explain it, but something will fall into place to where you will step back and be like, oh my God, like, this is happening. <laughs> I almost didn't leave my apartment today. If I hadn't left my apartment today, I would have never met you, and then I would have never been connected to them, and this, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And it works like that a lot out, out here in LA, I think specifically. So just, just keep doing it. Put yourself out there. Do not be discouraged by people who are better than you, better off than you. Because you don't, at the end of the day, you don't know what they're going through internally, you know, and they might be more successful, but everyone's on their own timeline. And their own path. Exactly. And they had to start out just like all of us, just like you, just like me. Yeah. And and just just keep going with it. Just just put it out there and reach out to as many people as you can and lift one another up. Nice. Oh, I'm inspired, guys. Shoot, I'm going to pick up the drum again. <laughs> that <laughs> I can was give awesome. lessons. That's really great. So, oh, do Thank you, you, would you, if someone wanted lessons from you, would you give someone lessons? At 100%, yeah. Cool. If someone wanted to book you for a photo shoot, would you do a photo shoot? 100%, yes. You guys heard it here. Yeah, photo shoots, lessons, drum lessons, uh, let me know. Cool. Have a great night, guys. Thanks. Thank you.